Hello viewers, welcome to the Bachelor course of Population Studies. Today, we will discuss about the techniques of population control. The number of humans on earth have increased enormously during the past several millennia, but especially during the past two centuries. By the end of the 20th century, the global population of humans was 6 billion. That figure is twice the population of 1960, a mere 30 years earlier. Moreover, the human population is growing at about 1.5% annually, equivalent to an additional 89 million people per year. The United Nations Population Fund estimates that there will be likely about 9 billion people alive in the year 2050. One of the gravest development issues most developing countries in the world are facing is population. As per United Nations population statistics, the world population grew by 30 percent between 1990 and 2010, which is an alarmingly high rate. Excessive population has various adverse effects, including undue pressure on natural resources. More people mean more consumption, which in turn means more exploitation of fixed and exhaustible resources. Also, population is not a universal challenge. It is specific to nations whose economies have yet not achieved full potential and development. Along with China and India, the African and some Latin American countries also see an extremely high population growth rate. Rather, China, which is the most populated nation, has achieved a very appreciative control of their growth of population, though their ways are highly autocratic and cannot be replicated in other countries. Below are the most effective measures which can be employed to control population growth. First, development. The enormous population and the increasing rate of it is the biggest challenge faced by the developing nations of Africa and Asia while the same is a little or no threat in countries like America, Europe or Japan. Lack of development implies high poverty, high illiteracy, high discrimination, lack of awareness, lack of medical facilities and thus in turn increased population growth. Any economy is termed developed if its population is non-discriminated and just. By reducing discrimination between gender and class and ensuring development of the whole population instead of a given segment of society would eliminate the challenge of population growth for once. Second, spread awareness. People need to be told and made to understand the consequences of having too many children. Government and non-government institutions can carry awareness campaigns informing people how they will be unable to provide good nutrition, education or medical facilities to their children if they have too many. Population is also a reason for illiteracy and diseases and malnutrition and the negative effects of it are required to be communicated to the general public to expand their reasoning and understanding. Governments need to be involved in providing the services that allow women to have healthy pregnancies and healthy births, that is, 
provision of universal access to reproductive health care. Third, family planning. Although family planning programs exist in both developed and less developed countries, there are noticeable differences between them. In most developed countries, family planning started in the 19th century or early 20th century. It was largely a private and philanthropic enterprise and primarily for the purpose of granting individuals, especially women, control over their own reproduction. Programs were organized and executed mostly by voluntary family planning associations and governments played no part in this great social demographic change. The early reduction of fertility was achieved largely through the use of traditional contraceptive methods. In less developed countries, by contrast, family planning began mainly in the second half of the 20th century. Rapid population growth in these countries was often seen as a constraint upon socio-economic development. Family planning was adopted as an official policy to release such pressure and was directly organized and financed by the government. In some countries, incentive and disincentive, sometimes coercive measures were employed to induce people to regulate their reproduction. The role of modern can contraceptive methods in controlling fertility was crucial in these programs. China's family planning program is one such example. Although family planning was promoted in some Chinese cities in the first half of the 20th century and then again in the 1950s, China's nationwide family planning program did not start until the early 1970s when its population reached more than 800 million. Facing this pressure, the later, longer fever policies which encouraged people to postpone marriage and childbirth to older ages, to prolong birth intervals and to reduce family size to one or two children were formed and implemented throughout nationwide family planning network. Even though a great reduction in fertility was achieved between 1970 and 1978, the Chinese government further tightened its birth control policies in 1979. In cities and advanced rural areas, couples were asked to have only one child in other rural areas, a family could have no more than two children, although there were exceptions. These radical policies remain in effect with minor modifications through the use of both incentive and punitive measures in addition to the vigorous promotion of family planning. By 2007, China's family planning program had met its demographic goals and the country's total fertility rate had been below replacement level for more than a decade. Despite this achievement, China's family planning program has been accompanied by some negative developments such as rising sex ratios at birth and an increasing number of induced abortions. These developments, which are related to China's long cultural tradition of sun preference and the implementation of strict birth control policies, have made the program very controversial.